Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can upload a file to a server using JavaScript's inbuilt fetch function. And what I'm going to be uploading is a user input file specified in this input of type file as well as any comments given by the user. And this is going to occur when the user clicks on this button of type submit to submit the form and we're going to be handling that process in JavaScript. But just before doing that, I want to mention two important attributes that you can add to the file input element. The first one is accept. And with accept, you can specify what type of file you will allow it to be uploaded. So in this case, I'm going to be uploading a JPEG image. So I want to be able to upload files with a JPEG extension. I can add more files, more file types by entering them in a comma separated list like this. So you can keep on going like that. I'm just going to keep JPEG because I know that that's the only file type I'm going to be uploading. And the second important option you can specify is multiple. So if you include this, it will allow the user to select multiple files on their system in one browse for upload. So, so because multiple is specified, what this allows the user to do is to select more than one image at the same time. And then you can upload those three files at the same time. If a user selects them one by one, then they're going to overwrite each other. But in this example, I'm only uploading one image. So I'm going to remove the multiple attribute. And what you'll see in most forms where there's an opportunity for multiple uploads is rather than the multiple attribute being used, more than one input element is included. And this can be less confusing for users in many cases because they can see how many uploads they have to make in terms of how many input elements there are on the page. Okay, so let's move on to handling the form now. The first thing I want to do in JavaScript is to get the form by its ID. And I'm going to attach an event listener to the form. I'm listening out for a submit on the button. And when that occurs, there's going to be a handler function and inside this handler function I'm going to handle the submit of the form. The first thing I want to do is to prevent the default behavior. HTML wants to send the form itself which will refresh the page. I need to prevent this behavior so that I can handle it here in JavaScript. Okay so the next thing I'm going to want to do is to select the file that the user wants to upload. So I'm going to select the file input element by its ID, which is file. And to access the actual file, I access the files object on this element. And this stores the files that the user has selected in a list. So it's going to be in list format, even if the user has only selected one file. So I can always access one file at position zero. And I'm going to save a reference to that file in a variable. And the other data that I want to post is the comments. So I need to select the input element for that as well. And this time it's not a file. I want to access the value of that input element and I'll reference that in a variable too. Okay, so now that I've selected the data that I want to send, I'm going to create a new instance of a special inbuilt object in JavaScript and that is the form data object. And there's two reasons that I'm doing this. So the first one is that the data that I've already selected, I can store it very easily in key value pairs within a form data object. And the second is that a form data object simplifies my post request. I won't have to specify any headers, any encoding, anything like that. The browser will automatically set all of those for me if I store my data inside of a form data object. So in general, it's a nice way to send form data with JavaScript. So what I'm doing here already is creating a new form data object by using the new keyword before form data. But what I still need to do is to save a reference to the object that I'm creating. So a lot of people call this form data. So I will stick to this naming convention here, but you can call it anything you like. Now what I need to do is to store the data that I've selected inside this new object. And the way that I do that is by calling the append method on the object. 
And then I enter a key under which I want to store a bit of data. So first I'm going to store the user file. So I'll give it a key of user file. In the second argument position, I need to pass in the data. So that is user file. And optionally in the third position for a file, I can specify a new name for the file. So for example, I could call it user file jpeg and then it would be saved under this file name rather than the file name that the user has given to it like in this example one.jpg and for the comments it's the same format except there's no optional third argument so I can give this data a key so I'll save it under user comments and then I pass in the data in the second position so now that I've stored my data inside my form data object, I'm ready to make the post request with fetch. So I start by calling fetch and I need to enter an endpoint for this post request. So in this case, I'm going to use the test endpoint provided by HTTP bin and that is forward slash post. And in the second argument position, I need to enter an object. So to specify the type of request, I need to create a property called method and inside there I specify the type. So in this case it's post and then the body of this request is going to be the form data object. So because I'm using a form data object, I don't actually need to specify anything else for this post request. The browser is going to take care of setting the necessary headers for me. And in fact, if you try setting the content type property for this post request, it can lead to an error. So it's best to let the browser do its thing and take care of that for you. So fetch returns a promise and you can handle the result of a promise using special then syntax. And you have available to you the result as a parameter. And then in a handler function, you can do something with that. So in this case, first of all, what I need to do is to convert the response from JSON to a JavaScript object. And then in the next then statement, I have the data available to me and I'll log that to the console. And if there's an error, it's going to fire the catch statement. And all I'm going to do here is log the error to the console if there is one. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully everything is working now. Let's test it out in the browser. Okay, so I'm going to select a file to upload and write some comments. Now, when I click upload file, this will make the post request. And this is the response from the server. So let's have a look and see what it contains. So remember that this server sends back to me my request. So let's see what headers were set in my request. So importantly, the content type was specified for me as multi-part form data and the encoding was also set to. So I didn't set any of these headers, but the browser has taken care of that for me. Now, in terms of data, we have inside this files property, the user file. So this is the JPEG that I sent. And also in the form property, we have the user comments and you can see that they are saved under the keys that I gave to them in JavaScript. So that is how you can post a file to a server using the inbuilt fetch function. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.